Welcome mathematicians. Today's video we'll be looking at modeling flow problems with networks and the skill we're looking at is flow capacity. Before we jump into today's video, I would recommend viewing the following video. So a quick review of our basics for flow graphs. Flow graphs involve directional edges and they represent scenarios such as the volume of water per second in pipes. So it could be, for example, six liters per second, five liters per second. Another scenario could be maximum number of cars per second traveling on a road. So this particular road might have a capacity of nine cars per second, whereas this one might only handle five cars per second. It could be some kind of data transfer system that represents the number of terabytes per second capacity. In all flow graphs, we have flow that travels from the source to the sink. A cut is a line drawn as shown here and here which cuts the network into two and effectively separates the source from the sink. Each cut has a capacity and it's simply the sum of the individual edges cut. So eight and a six would give me a cut capacity of 14 and a nine and a four would give me a cut capacity of 13. Please note, this only works for edges flowing from the source to the sink. It doesn't work the other way around and we'll look at some examples that involve that shortly. If you're ever asked to work out the maximum flow, this is simply calculated by finding the minimum cut. So we have two cuts here. Cut A has a capacity of 14, cut B a capacity of 13. However, neither of those are the minimum cut for this diagram. Can you see a minimum cut? Cut C, that cuts through edge of weight 5 and 4, has a capacity of only 9 and completely severs the source from the sink. So this is our minimum cut and hence the maximum flow of our network. Let's look at three examples from VCAA. Our first example, the flow of water through a series of pipes is shown in the network below. The number of edges show the maximum flow through each pipe in liters per minute. Here's our diagram. And what is the capacity of cut Q in liters per minute? So cut Q starting from the bottom and moving up to the top slices through those particular edges. Let's calculate its capacity. Again, this is a valid cut because it's completely chopping the source from the sink. Here's our line. An analogy I want to try and use, please. I've used this in a previous video. If you were imagining our dotted cut line to be a road and a car starts at the bottom and travels to the top, if the directed edge goes through the passenger and out the driver's side, then that weight counts towards the capacity of cut Q. Three contributes to our overall capacity of this cut. We move on to our next edge. In this scenario, you'll see that the direction of this particular flow is from the driver's side to the passenger. So that particular number three is actually flowing from the sink to the source. You can see it's moving away from the sink towards the source. So that contributes a zero to the capacity of our cut. The next edge has a weighting of six. That represents a line that travels from the passenger side through the drivers. So it's included in our capacity. And finally, the five is also included as it travels from the passenger to the driver's side. That gives me a total cut capacity of 14. So the answer to our question, what's the capacity of cut Q in litres per minute? The capacity of cut Q is 14 litres per minute. Simply summing up the individual edge weightings and ignoring any that flow from the sink to the source. Task number two. The following directed graph shows the flow of water in litres per minute in a system of pipes connecting the source to the sink. So again, we have our source and a range of different connections to the sink. What is the maximum flow in litres per minute from the source to the sink? When attempting these problems, there is an element of trial and error. However, I do recommend as a process to cut edges nearest the source first of all. So I'm looking at chopping through these three, as we have here. Each one of these three edges is moving from the source to the sink, and they have a contribution to the capacity. So cut A has an overall capacity of 6 plus 10 plus 4, which is 20. Then also, let's consider us cut near the sink end of our network. So this has three edges that are also all contributing towards the capacity overall. So it's at 8 plus 10 plus 2 gives me 20. A third cut to consider is moving from the bottom left to the top right. And that has one, two, three edges all contributing to the capacity or flowing from the source to the sink. So that's got a total capacity of 6 plus 10 plus 2, which is 18. So, so far, that's our minimum cut. And finally, there's another option we could take, which cuts through the 8, the 10 and the 4, all heading in the right direction from the source to the sink. So that has a capacity of 22. There's our four cuts we're considering. So the question is, what's the maximum flow in litres per minute from the source to the sink? Maximum flow equals minimum cut. And the minimum cut was cut C of 18. 
So the maximum flow is 18 litres per minute. Our final example, number three, looks a bit more complex, but let's get into it. The flow of oil through a series of pipelines in litres per minute is shown in the network below. And there we have our large network. The weightings of three of the edges are labelled X. There's an X, there's an X, and there's an X. Five cuts labelled A to E are shown on the network. Cut A, cut B, cut C, cut D, and cut E. The maximum flow of oil, which is another way of saying minimum cut, from the source to the sink in litres per minute is given by the capacity of. So we've got five options here we need to consider. Option A says, cut A represents the maximum flow if x equals 1. Option B states that cut B is the maximum flow if x equals 2. Option C, cut C is the maximum flow if x equals 2. Option D says cut D is the maximum flow if x equals 3. And finally, option E states that cut E is the maximum flow if x equals 3. So clearly we have to investigate the capacity of each one of these cuts. So first of all, cut A, it involves a weighted edge of 4, 10, x, and 11, all heading in the right direction from source to sink. So there's our statement. Cut A is equal to 4 plus 10 plus x plus 11. We don't know the actual value yet. Cut B, let's consider. That cuts through edges 4, 10, x. 6 is going the wrong way. If I'm in a car, it's traveling through my drives to my passenger from right to left. That doesn't contribute. 2 and 7. So here's our statement for cut B. Cut C goes through the weighted edge of 4, 3, 8, x, 2 and 7, all of which are heading from the source to the sink. So here's our statement. Cut D from the bottom up goes 10, x. Now x again is traveling from right to left as it travels through our cut. So it's not included in the total and we represent that with a 0. So the rest of the edges do contribute to the overall cut capacity, a 9, a 5, a 3, and another 5. And finally, cut E, which is a short one. Analyzing from bottom to top, we have a 10 and a 9, a 3, and a 5, all traveling from the source to the sink. So here's our statement. Cut E has a 10, 9, 3, and a 5. Our first consideration was option A, that cut A would represent the maximum flow and therefore the minimum capacity if x is equal to 1. So let's substitute x equals 1. Cut A ends up with a capacity of 26, cut B 24, cut C 25, cut D 32, and cut E 27. So if X is one, cut B has the minimum capacity and hence the maximum flow. So cut A generates the capacity of maximum flow when X equals one is incorrect. Let's have a look when X equals two. Cut A has a value of 27, cut B 25, cut C 26, cut D 32, and cut E 27. So again, the minimum capacity or maximum flow is through cut B when x equals 2. And that's what option B says. It says cut B will give us the maximum flow if x equals 2. So that's our correct answer. Let's quickly look at the remainders. Option C says cut C will give a maximum flow, therefore minimum capacity when x equals 2. Now that's clearly not true. Cut C doesn't give the minimum flow and maximum capacity because it's 26, whereas cut B is only 25. Finally, let's check out the option when x equals 3. Again, we can check out all our values and cut B still has the lowest capacity of 26, even when X equals three. So our option D, cut D gives a maximum flow or lowest capacity when X equals three. Well, that's incorrect. Cut D has a capacity of 32, whereas cut B is 26. And finally, option E, cut E provides a maximum flow or minimum capacity when X equals three. Cut E has a capacity of 27 when X equals three and cut B is lower with 26. You've been watching a Juddy Productions video. If you've enjoyed and indeed learned something from this video, then please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.